As we begin a new year, the national unemployment rate continues to rise and economic numbers from the holiday season are not promising. In Tennessee, state revenues continue to fall short of projections and state agencies are slashing their budgets up to 20 percent. Closer to home, Chattanooga seems to be riding out the economic storm a little better than some places. I'm Chuck Cantrell and this is Metro Campus, the UTC Report. Today we'll be discussing how UTC and the Chamber of Commerce work together to protect the economic vitality of our region. So come back for Metro Campus, the UTC Report. Hello, welcome back to Metro Campus, the UTC Report. I'm Chuck Cantrell. Turn on any newscast or pick up any newspaper and you'll likely see more bad news on the nation's economy. Unemployment is up and confidence in the market is shaken. Here in the Tennessee Valley, we seem to be faring better than some parts of the country. The University of Tennessee at Chattanooga and the Chattanooga Area Chamber of Commerce work both together and separately to keep our local economy healthy and to support workers in this region. With me today to discuss this partnership and some of the joint projects are Sandy Cole, Director of the UTC Center for Community Career Education, and Jed Marston, Vice President of Marketing and Communications at the Chattanooga Area Chamber of Commerce. Jed and Sandy, both of you, thanks for being here today. Sandy, I want to start out with just sort of an <coughs> easy question for you. What exactly is the Center for Community Career Education and, and what do you do? Well, basically, Chuck, what we do is we're, we're, we're a national, uh, a local nonprofit organization. It's been around for 28 years. And we basically provide career workforce development kind of training and skills to youth and adults. Uh, currently, our work is in the area of college awareness, college readiness, to get uh, kids ready to come into college. And, and we basically have discovered that if they're successful in school, they'll be successful in college. So college access and college success do go together now. And we have programs ranging from uh, fourth and fifth grade, trying to get them interested in college at an early age, all the way through adults, and we serve adults in eight counties and helping them get back to college and finding the funding to go back to college. Let me ask you a question about your role in, in the university mission, because people may not think of working in high schools and even middle schools and mm -hmm. elementary schools as part of a, a university's mission. They think mm -hmm. of you know, teaching college students. How are you part of UTC's sort of metropolitan mission? Well, I, I would like to think that we're engaged in the region and we try to bring the resources that the institution has to the community to address needs that the community has identified things that they would like to see some kind of additional resources brought to bear that, that would in influence some decisions on the part of their kids or their adults and making some decisions that will improve the quality of their life so we work very closely with partners in like I said these eight counties and we'll look for grant opportunities to write grants for them uh, where we can share our again our internal resources at the university and their resources so it's been a really good partnership for the last 28 years and we hope that certainly hope that it continues in the near future. Jed I'm going to ask you a question that you know, perhaps sounds a little bit like what is the meaning of life because when you talk about <laughs> what does the Chattanooga Area Chamber of Commerce do it's almost easier perhaps to create a list of what they don't do but tell the viewers who may not be familiar with the the Chamber's activities what what is the goal of the Chattanooga Area Chamber of Commerce what are some of y'all's programs? Um, our, our mission is to raise the overall prosperity of our region, and we have two major components that are involved in that. Number one, we're a, a business association. We have 1,700 business members, and they range from the very largest companies in Chattanooga to one person uh, and mom and pop type companies. And we offer a range of services to them, from group buying power to seminars to networking, all designed to help them succeed and create jobs in our market. Secondarily, we are the leading economic development organization from our region, and on that front, we work to encourage new business startups all the way through to recruiting Volkswagen. We were the coordinating entity working with the city and the county and local organizations in the direct interface to recruit Volkswagen. So we do a whole range of things, but then on top of those things, we also work on workforce and education. Uh, because one of the primary ways that we recruit and attract and help our existing companies grow is by making sure that we've got a fantastic workforce in Chattanooga. So we're very engaged in making sure that the business people and the educators have opportunities to dialogue and get on the same page and help the educators make sure that they're producing the product that the business people need 
uh, and also because the business people are investing in education. Well, you know, not to put you on the hot seat here just a little bit, but I mean, how are we doing in Chandling? I mentioned that we may be doing a little bit better than the national numbers. Um, is, that, is that still the case? We, we are um, in some ways. Um, we are being very definitely impacted by the national economic downturn. Our unemployment rate has gone up dramatically. It's traditionally been extremely low. Even when things weren't great, our unemployment rate remained low. We're about matching the national average right now. We are doing about a percent better than the Tennessee unemployment rate, so that's a good thing. Um, we are uh, very fortunate as compared to many communities in that we have lots of major investments happening. Volkswagen, we've mentioned, Alstom uh, about a year ago announced that they were doing a very large, very um, uh, major investment that's going to create a lot of new jobs. So we've got a lot of calls for hope that other areas may not have because even as things are bad, these uh, projects are under construction and the prospects are they're going to hire a bunch of people and pay them very good wages. Let me ask you a question, and, and it seems that there's been a lot of effort um, to sort of maybe retool the Chattanooga economy. Um, even with the Volkswagen uh, plant, there seems to be a lot of, of, of high-tech sort of, uh, it's not, uh, your, 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 it's not your, your uh, grandfather's Volkswagen plant moving into Chattanooga. Is, is that a strategic move, and is the chamber helping direct that? Well, I wouldn't say the chamber's helping to direct it. We've worked for a number of years to encourage innovation in our economy through our spirit of innovation program we also run the center for entrepreneurial growth which is focused on nurturing high-tech businesses but i think what's happened in chattanooga in other areas very often there was only one kind of manufacturing and in many cases it just kind of disappeared before they had a chance to change we've seen certain segments of our manufacturing go away we don't have foundries for the most part anymore but on the other hand, we're seeing existing businesses that were once very generalized, kind of, uh, you know, machine shops, are starting to specialize in specific high-tech applications, and they're, they're succeeding as a result. We have a couple of companies, for example, that do robotics uh, for the automotive industry, and both of those are doing very well. And we're seeing other companies that are specializing, going high-tech and succeeding as a result, and that's just in manufacturing. In other areas, and this is something that Chattanooga has very definitely benefited from, we really have a, a fantastically diverse economy. Even in manufacturing, you know, we've got Volkswagen now, but we've had lots of food and beverage, as well as the production of durable goods. And then you move over into other areas, and we've got major insurance companies, we've got a strong finance sector, we've got a strong tourism sector. There aren't too many places that manage to be strong in manufacturing and strong in tourism and strong in back office, and Chattanooga is one of those places. I tell you what, we're going to have to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue our discussion on workforce development in our region. Hello, welcome back to Metro Campus. I'm Chuck Cantrell. We're continuing our conversation with Sandy Cole of the UTC Center for Community Career Education and Jed Marston of the Chattanooga Area Chamber of Commerce. Okay, Sandy, it's time for Reality Check, which is one of my favorite <laughs> names of uh, the programs that you uh, work with with the Chamber. Tell me a little bit about some of these school programs that you work with in partnership with the Chamber. What are, the, what are they? What are, what are the goals? Well, I think this kind of started at the beginning back, I believe it was dead in 2000 when that, um, they, we were doing the career cluster, uh, industry clustering. And I think a theme that kind of came through all of those uh, forums that those ind individuals uh, conducted over, the, over that year was, was a strand of workforce development. And so I think the chamber uh, basically took the lead in recognizing that that was really an important part of the economic development process. and so. They wanted some programming that would address some of these needs, so we started it um, with... Let me ask, you, what exactly, when you say workforce development, what does that mean? Before we get into, I'm sorry, before we get into the specific programs, what does workforce development mean? Just, it means all the stuff you do to make sure that when people apply for jobs, they're well qualified to do them. Okay, that's simple enough. Yeah, there you go. Not calculus. That's, so basically we started with an eighth grade program called Career Crunch, and it alternates each year between Chattanooga State and UTC, and it's basically to give eighth graders an opportunity to, to explore careers, so they can start kind of making some sense of that seat time they have in the classroom to what's out in the real world. 
Um, then Reality Check was the next program we did for ninth graders, and that's a simulation exercise where the kids get to pretend they're 25 years old and have to make decisions based on their income and taking care of their family. And it's a really fun event for volunteers, and, and uh, if you haven't volunteered for that before, you know, go ahead and jump on that one. And the Let's talk about that a little bit. What, okay. are some of, what are some of the ideas that you cover in Reality Check? Well, um, the kids are either assigned an uh, education attainment level. They, they could be assigned a high school dropout, a high school grad, tech school grad, or college grad. They get a, a job, a career, and a salary based on that education attainment. So if you're a high school dropout, you know, your outlook is not so good, and your salary it won't ref will reflect that. Um, then this, so what they start, it's like us writing our check every month, our bills. They start with a balance in their account, and then they have to go to housing, utilities, food, clothing, all the things that we write checks for every month and make decisions. And sometimes and then life happens. They may have a flat tire, so they have to go to a booth that basically says you have a flat tire, go pay $50 for a new one. They don't like that too much. Um, and sometimes the kids run out of money. And, you know, we don't get, issue credit cards for reality checks. So they have to make ends meet based on what they can earn. So they can go to a booth and get a, pick up a second job. So it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of aha moments there. We've had volunteers have aha moments, and of course the kids do too. And I, and I, I guess our, the, the most common remark is, oh, I understand now why mom and dad say no when I want this or that. Well, so, Jen, let me ask you a question. What's the relationship between the students sort of seeing um, these realities of, of what kind of ed ed education you attain and, and the, the, the salaries available and the chamber's goals and workforce development? Well, what we're really hoping to do is answer the question, you know, why do I have to study algebra? We want these 8th through 12th graders to understand that the decisions they're making right now will impact their ability to earn in a very short period of time. And some of the, uh, the comments are really striking with Reality Check. We've had uh, young women say, well, now I understand why I need to make sure that I don't get pregnant until I finish college. I mean, talk about a life-altering realization. And some of these kids just don't realize that the very little decisions they're making every day in high school and at the beginning of high school um, will really impact the rest of their life. Um, so we want them to understand that when they're sitting in the classroom, that will impact how they, the decisions they make with regard to how they study and what they study uh, can determine whether they have an easy time of it when they graduate, and have a career that they want. Um, in reality check, you know, they find out as a single, uh, single parent who's a dropout, you can't run a Hummer. Uh, in fact, probably as a college uh, graduate, you know, you can't start off by having a Hummer. And a lot of these kids just don't really connect with how much things actually cost. Yeah. I tell you what, Cindy, we're going to have to take a break, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm going to uh, interrupt you again. But let me ask you this. If, if you mentioned volunteering, so just very quickly, if someone is interested in working with your center or volunteering on some of these projects, how do they get in touch with you? Well, to volunteer for these projects, you can call the chamber. That's 7562121. Kathy Humble will, will take your re uh, request and steer you with what the dates are. Um, for the center, just call our number, 425-4557. We have lots of opportunities in the programs that we run for volunteers. And they can also reach you through the UTC website. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. When we come back, we'll conclude our conversation and talk a little bit about Volkswagen. Thanks for coming back for more Metro Campus, the UTC report. Volkswagen's announcement of plans to build a manufacturing plant here in Chattanooga revitalized our local economy in a big way, both psychologically and financially. Um, Jen and Sandy, I want to talk to both of you a little bit about uh, the Volkswagen announcement. But Jen, let me ask you a question. Have, have, has, I know the chamber was very active in recruiting Volkswagen. Have you been surprised by just how much it's meant for this community? No, actually, we had a very strong sense of that. Um, we, we lived through a disappointment, uh, really, the previous year with Toyota, and we basically suffered through that for a whole year until we got Volkswagen. So we knew how important this was to the community. We're very pleased and, and happy that people are so buoyed by it and that that has continued, um, especially right now. I mean, so much of the economy is psychological. You know, if people believe things are going to be okay and keep spending, then things are okay. If they stop spending, everything goes downhill. And so Volkswagen has really created a focus, a psychological positive for this, this community that we're hoping is going to help us power through this 
with having a lot less downturn, a lot less downside than many communities are experiencing. I have to tell you, I've, I've had an opportunity to interact with uh, several officials from Volkswagen, and I've been really impressed with they really see us as, as their new home in their community, and they want to be good corporate neighbors, mm -hmm. and they're not just coming in and building a plant. And they're already making those relationships before they even you know, start making the cars. Um, so, Sandy, tell me a little bit about what your experience and, and your connections through the center and through UTC have been with Volkswagen. Well, it's fortunate to go uh, with a group from Chattanooga to the BMW plant in October. Uh, it was a planning and research uh, mission, I guess we were on and had an opportunity to see uh, what's going on in K-12 and post-secondary workforce development, um, the infrastructure, um, uh, what I call the welcome wagon mm -hmm. uh, strand where, you know, how do you welcome all these new employees uh, and people from Germany to the community. And we just had an opportunity to listen to what the experience was in Spartanburg, Greensville, uh, South Carolina, uh, when BMW came in there. And I think it heightened our awareness on how significant um, the impact of in every sector of our economy that, that would be in Chattanooga. Uh, we had a follow-up to that last Friday and kind of a, a, a summation of uh, the, some of the small group work that we did and there'll be some next steps taken but everything I think from when they had the last career fair and expected a thousand and five thousand came everything I've been to it's kind of like whatever the expectations are expect four to five times more so you know I think the region and the city and the county are kind of gearing up for how to uh, roll out the carpet and make sure the process is as smooth as possible uh, for all involved. So what are some of the things we need to be doing as a community? Well, some of the things that we learned and actually published in the report associated with the trip that we took to Greenville to see what BMW's impact was, you know, 15 years after they opened, um, we need to start thinking and acting regionally. Uh, one of the big impacts is Greenville had phenomenal population growth, and they went from consuming about one acre for every new person they added to consuming five acres for every new person they added. So they had tremendous sprawl. Sprawl leads to Atlanta-like gridlock and all those problems. And we've worked really hard over the last few decades to make sure that, you know, that people had proximity to where they worked and all those kinds of things. So some of that stuff we need to think about, we need to work on, and it really has to do with regional transportation. It's well beyond Hamilton County. People mm -hmm. are going to come from North Georgia, North Alabama, mm -hmm. a very large area in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And so we need to think about how we work together to solve some of those issues. But then lots of other things having to do with making sure that we've got diversity and hiring and how we work with the company to do the very best job we can with that. We want to make sure that as many, most of the people they hire from the Chattanooga region and not people who are driving in from some other part of the country to get these jobs. Uh, we want this to have major impact on the people who are here, on the people, the Tennesseans, who are you know, footing the bill for the incentives and the other things that are associated with this project. Um, so we've got, a, we've got a lot of work to do, but uh, the mayors gave us the uh, authorization and the backing to kind of convene a regional group to begin working on some of these things, and that's what we're going to do. So you tell me a little bit about UTC's connection. We're pretty aware of Chattanooga State's relationship um, in, the, in the training process for the, the assembly plant, but what is UTC doing, and how are they interacting with Volkswagen? Well, I think uh, the various departments have been uh, involved in some of the discussions. I know the provost has been involved in some of the uh, Center for Computational Engineering, uh, Dr. Sutton in the College of Engineering. I've been very fairly integral, integral in some of these conversations. Um, programs like, like what we operate, what we're trying to do is to get young people and adults in positions where they can uh, take advantage of these opportunities that will be coming not just in two years, but in five and ten years. Uh, our work with fourth and fifth graders, for example, is that kind of a long-term investment on getting them ready um, to enter a, a different job market than what their parents are experiencing right now or before. So, you know, it's a math science focused program like Upper Bound Math Science or Talent Search where we're looking for those kids uh, who have, have the capacity to go to college but may not have the means to go. We're trying to bring all those together. And then again, the thousand adults that we work with in the eight counties, trying to find ways for them to get in the technical schools or the university to access programs that will help them become successful too. I tell you what, we're almost uh, out of time, but just, are you already hearing from like 
elementary school kids about asking how can they get jobs oh. at Volkswagen? <laughs> mm -hmm. we, just, we have talked to them about it, that's actually. That's great. I tell you what, that's <laughs> wonderful. Uh, thanks for watching this month. Remember, you can always find more information about Metro Campus by visiting the UTC campus or website at www.utc.edu. Thanks for watching. See you next month.